Hi guys, whether on a table saw or a band saw, a sled is a useful addition. It allows you to make fast, accurate 90 degree cuts safely and quickly. And there's loads of videos on YouTube to build these, but none of these seem to include a mitre arm. With this, adjustment is simple, allowing you to cut any angle you want with the same smooth sled action. Let me show you how I made this one. If you saw my review of this drape band saw a few weeks ago, you might recall that I liked the saw, but like most saws out there, the mitre gauge was quite weak. It's quite loose in the track and not long enough to offer decent support. But by using these grooves, it's possible to make something much better. I took some scraps of hardwood and trim these down until they fit into these tracks. Now they need to fit snugly, but they also need to move freely. So take your time with your shaping and sanding. You'll also note that these sit proud of the table at the moment, and that's deliberate. Here I've removed the blade from the bandsaw. You'll need a piece of plywood or MDF. This should be a minimum thickness of 18 millimeters, and I cut mine to roughly the same size as the table. Starting with the far track, I added a little masking tape to the face of the table. I then added a thin bead of glue on top of just the one strip. The MDF was placed on top and positioned carefully before adding some weight. Once the glue was fully dried, the blade was placed back in the bandsaw. The glued strip was carefully aligned with the slot and a groove was cut to just a little over halfway. A mitre arm is needed and I decided to use a scrap of U-channel as it's smooth and straight, though a length of straight timber would work just as well. I cut a couple of pieces of hardwood and glued these into the channel. With the adhesive dry, I drilled a pivot point hole at one end. It was then just a matter of working out where this pivot point should go, and lightly marking this onto the MDF. It's important that this hole is perpendicular, so I used a drilled block as a guide. A bolt the same diameter as the hole was pushed through from underneath. I fixed a scrap of angle line to my router and used the pivot bolt to form a compass. I then used a narrow router bit and cut out a curved slot. With that done, on the underside, I used a wider router bit and cut down roughly halfway to produce a T-shaped slot. Still on the underside, the head of the bolt was outlined and a hole was chiselled to receive the bolt head. The head needs to fit flush and it was bonded with adhesive, taking care not to get any glue on the thread. Using a scrap of paper, I made a simple template of the slot shape. I transferred this onto a section of hardwood and sanded it to shape. A hole was drilled through the centre of this to receive a bolt. The head of the bolt was ground down by roughly half. A hex shaped relief was chiselled in and the bolt head slid perfectly into this. Again a little adhesive was used to bond the bolt in place and the wood was sanded, rounding the corners and easing the edges slightly to enable it to travel within the T-slot. If you have a second guide slot, as I do here, it's time to glue on the second hardwood strip.
Once dried, the wooden rails are countersunk and screwed. These were then reduced with a wood plane and some sanding. I drilled an appropriately placed hole through the mitre arm and did a trial fit. It was at this point that I realised I'd cocked up. Any tension knob I fitted would likely sit proud of the front edge. So I had to make a couple of adjustments to my arm design. You can buy threaded knobs, but I decided to make one. I cut down a few scraps into different size squares. The larger was trimmed to be roughly octagonal. A small sanding drum helped to add a little shape to this. The smaller scrap was also cut with eight sides before having a hole drilled through its center. I then used my drill press to turn and sand the piece into a cylinder. A hex shape was chiseled into the cylinder and a nut fit nicely inside this. Using a spare bolt, tightening the bolt draws the nut firmly into the chiselled hole. The upper section can then be glued on, being careful not to get any glue on the thread. Finally, a few coats of wax are applied to the MDF to make it shiny and reduce friction. This also included wax in the bandsaw table. With the MDF in place, it was time for a final fitting. It was a little fiddly, but the mitre arm went on nicely. A couple of large washers go onto the tensioning bolt and the knob was twisted on. The pivot bolt got a washer and a nylon locking nut. This was tightened until it was snug, then a quarter turn back loosened it enough to allow it to turn. And that's a finished mitre sled. Obviously it's possible to add a few improvements to this sled, for starters, there's currently no markings, and that's because I have an accurate square on order, and I want to make use of this before I do any marking. Once I have that accuracy, I may add a couple of guide holes for quick stops, like 90 degrees, 45 and 30, etc. A hole and peg arrangement will make precise alignment quick and easy. The mitre arm could also be longer, so that it supports both sides of the cut, but I like it how it is. And the height of this could always be increased with a simple screw-on section. Some people like to secure a stop to the underside to prevent the sled from being pushed too far forward, but I'm happy just to stop pushing. And finally, a simple handle could be screwed on to help with the pushing and pulling. But personally, I'm happy with the sled just as it is now. It costs me nothing to make as I have everything lying around, and it does allow for quick, accurate cuts of any angle that I like. I hope you enjoyed this one guys, and if you did, please like it. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, share this video with all your woodworking buddies, and check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. So that's it for now guys, take care and thanks for watching.